All right, sweet. Let's kick this off, guys. So we're super honored to have Layla Hormozy on, co-founder of Gym Launch and Prestige Labs <laughs> and Alan <laughs> and Acquisition.com, currently CEO of Acquisition.com. She has a special place in her heart, obviously, for Gym Launch and all the gym lords in here. So we're very, very honored to have her on. I'm super excited for this talk. So I was thinking about like my biggest learnings over that last year and things that I have learned not being in Gym Launch or Prestige anymore, being in Acquisition.com, talking to now 30 plus businesses a week of all sorts of industries and sizes and seeing those common trends. I kind of wrote down the two things that I think are most important for everybody here, self-leadership, and then the second is leading your team, building that team, having that stability there. And so there's two things that I have personally worked on in the last year, looking at, you know, how do I become the version of myself that's worthy of a billion dollar company? One, I think that when it comes to your team, a lot of emphasis in the last decade has been around how to have hard conversations, how to address problems with your team, how to correct people's mistakes. What I don't think has had enough emphasis is how to reward your team. And this is been something that has been my main focus and how I have been building our team at acquisition.com in a way that feels a lot easier than I've built in the past. And I look to why didn't I see this sooner or you know what was it that was preventing me from seeing this? And I don't think that I realize how much of a difference it makes. But I think what happens is a lot of times we get into business, we're so concerned about the fact that usually in the beginning, we're a lot easier on people and we have to hone in on how do we have those hard conversations? How do we tell people they're not meeting our standards? How do we hold people accountable? I think we can save ourselves a heck of a lot of effort if we focus on what we reward. And so I've taken a different approach as to how I give feedback and how I manage the entire team we have here. And it's much more reward focused. So rather than thinking, how do I give this person critical feedback? I instead will say, when is a time though, that maybe they have exhibited some of a trait that I want to see more of? Because usually when you're giving someone negative feedback, it's usually that you're not seeing something that you want to see in order for them to do the job. Instead of me thinking about all the times they missed that thing, I think of what are all the times they did do that thing. They did show that behavior. They did show that one trait that I need from them. And then I reward them for it. And I recognize them for it. And I put that label on them that they are good at that thing. And I have noticed that that has been the most effective thing that I could possibly do. Rather than holding people accountable saying, hey, this is where you sit and you're just really far away from the top. Instead, I approach it with, hey, you're so close. Look, you've only got these few things that you need to work on. And then you're a 10 out of 10. I think that you'll be an absolute powerhouse. When you frame it that way, nobody's scared nobody feels any sort of like, oh, you're going to fire them, nothing like that. Their behavior changes so much faster because what gets rewarded is what is reinforced. The reason this is so fucking hard is because our brains always want to find the problems. But if you challenge yourself to find the good things in the people and the times that they have exhibited the thing you want to see more of, then you're much more likely to help them succeed because if they can borrow the belief that you have in them and they feel that you truly believe they can do it, they believe, they're like, Layla believes I can do it, so I must be able to do it. When someone on your team is failing, they know and they feel shit. All they're doing in their mind all day is creating this list of evidence as to why they suck. And so your job as a leader, like a true leader, is to create the list of evidence as to why they don't suck. Now, the second thing, understanding what it takes to really win. And a lot of people have asked me this question, well, there's probably a recession coming. Like, what should we do? And I'm like, it's not about what should we do. It's about who you are. And we saw this a glimpse of it during COVID. I will never forget there was a call where there were two gym owners. One was in an area that was completely shut down and they were not allowed to do business. And he had just the most positive attitude. He completely changed his business. He made it work. And he was actually ended up making more money within about eight to 12 weeks. There was another guy on the call. It was so ironic because he is complaining. He's just telling everyone why it won't work, why he can't do it. This guy had such a terrible mindset that it didn't matter the circumstance. He was looking for the negative and looking for reasons why he could fail. What I've realized and really distilled it down to push factor. It ties to our core tenet of competitive greatness. It's something that I believe can be built if we put ourselves in situations that are shitty and don't give ourselves ways out. If every time in your business, you see a challenge as a negative and you avoid it because it makes you feel bad and you experience a negative feeling and you don't like it, you're never going to get better. You're never going to grow. And you're also not going to have a team of people who are going to do that. Like your team is going to be weak because you're weak. And what's the difference between someone who's weak and who's strong? It's literally just, are you avoiding conflict? Are you avoiding uncomfortable situations and uncomfortable feelings. Being strong doesn't mean that you don't feel those feelings and that you don't sometimes mess up those situations. It just means that you still go through them. Can they find a way to actually get good at being stressed? People assume, oh, well, maybe they're not stressed. That's why they're so good at being competitively great. They're just better at being stressed than you are. You're terrible at being stressed. I think the best way to build that muscle is to just start today with something that's making you uncomfortable, something that you've been fucking avoiding and go do it. So you can prove to yourself that you're not that way. You can prove that 
at yourself that you are competitively great because I think it starts with doing the small things and eventually it spreads. How have you and Alex learned so much in a relatively short period of time, how to run and create businesses this successful when most people won't learn that in a lifetime? What is the key to getting that skill set fast? Growing a business is hard. Getting better at business is hard. Continuing to take risks when you don't need to is hard. My identity is being somebody who will constantly do the hard things no matter how it feels. For me, a lot of the times the hard things just happen to result in growth in business, but that's not why I make those decisions. It's because that is going to shape me into the kind of person I want to be. I just really resonate with the competitive greatness piece, which is like, I like the hard challenge. Do I feel good about it all the time? No, but I like it. If that makes any sense, which is like, do you like the stress that comes with business and stress with learning all the time? And pushing yourself and breaking your own beliefs on a consistent basis or doing things that you don't yet believe you could do, but you know, logically makes sense that you could. I just go into everything with like the utmost willingness to fail. You guys have seen us for a long time. We failed plenty of times along the way. And we've talked about those failures. You know, there's things that we've done that we just ate shit, but I just know that that's a prerequisite for a success. If we fail at something, we do not let us, it prevent us from trying again. Even if that failure has me feeling awful or terrified or embarrassed or humiliated, like I know that I don't want to be ruled by my feelings. Like I want to be pulled by the desire of who I want to become. I don't want to be ruled by these feelings. If you want to grow really fast, you've got to be really fucking uncomfortable. I'm failing all the time, but like, I don't look at it as failure. If I don't do something well or make a mistake, I look at it as failure if I give up. So it's like, I'm eating shit all the time and I'm just okay with eating shit. And I actually gain more confidence eating shit than not, because I know at least I'm making progress. And I think that we're just willing to eat shit at a very high rate faster than a lot of people. And I think if you're willing to do that and you're a psychopath, then, you know, you can do it too. So when it comes to the mindset and working through the hard things, number one, how do you identify when it's a real issue versus a false perception? And two, how do you determine if you need to work it out alone or lean on others? If you look up like cognitive biases or like um, distorted thinking, that's where I filter most of my stuff through. Like I literally go like, am I thinking in an all or nothing fashion? Am I catastrophizing? Am I overgeneralizing? Like I run through in my mind those cognitive biases. And if it checks the box for more than one, which usually does, then I'm like, oh, okay. Usually it's a false perception. Most of the time when I'm working through a mindset thing, it's that I have the wrong frame. Like I'm framing something incorrectly. Maybe I'm like, oh, there's something wrong with me. There's something wrong with this situation. There's something wrong with this person. Like it's almost like we're thinking there's something wrong when it's like, maybe that's just who I am. That's just what this is. And sometimes I'll tell Alex, like, God, what's wrong with me? I was thinking this the other day. And he goes, yeah, well, you are weird. (laughs) And I'm like, what? And then he's like, so fucking what? You're weird. Like, do you want to be like everybody else? And I'm like, no, I don't. I would say nine times out of 10, it's a false perception. It's cognitive bias working in some way. And to determine if I need to work out alone or lean on others, that's a tough one. I think you've got to think through for yourself. I tend to, only utilize myself, Alex, and Trevor with anything that I'm thinking through. I am very protective of my mental space and I don't trust a lot of people to speak things into me. And I don't think that many of the times they're accurate. Kind of like if you go to the doctor, it's like the first thing they want to do is tell you what's wrong with you, right? I avoid the doctor at all costs. I typically, if I'm trying to work through something, will do my own research and find a method that I think is going to be useful for me in terms of like retraining my ways of thinking, which is usually what it is. What's the biggest lever in a business that needs to be pulled in order to make an impact? Wearing so many hats, you are pulled addressing so many positions. It's hard to see what's the most important. How much you pour into your team. You as a business owner can never do everything. And so every time that I feel overwhelmed or like I'm being pulled in too many directions, I just know that I'm not pouring into my team enough. I should always be finding ways that I am taking my constraints and making them their opportunities. Because if the things that I barely have time for, why am I not pushing them onto someone and training them on how to do it and helping them grow in their role? I think that it's often overlooked, but if you look at, you know, like I just read a book recently that McKinsey talked about, you know, the the, the focuses of a CEO and more of them are people than not. <laughs> and so, you know, I think that oftentimes we think that we need to be the expert in everything, but I think just over time I've learned that's not true. And if you really believe and you push down to the people that you have on your team and you invest in them, they're the only appreciating asset in your entire business. And I just think team is everything. What is the one piece or two pieces of advice that you would like to leave this entire group with? I would like to leave you with some confidence, which is something that I've realized working in so many businesses, building different businesses and seeing the inner workings of so many different ones. Gyms are not easy. And if you can do this and you can master building a gym, you could literally build a business as big as gym launch. If you can master the skills that you were taught here in gym launch, like The things that are being taught in gym launch are the same things that need to happen in a hundred million dollar business. It's just a different scale and it's a different level. If I can make this opportunity and I can maximize this one, I can maximize my skill set and I can completely 
milk the opportunity I currently have, then I'm also setting my future self up for success. I think a lot of people think like, oh, what's it like to run acquisition.com? I'm like, I do the same shit you guys do. <laughs> it's just a different business. Like it, it sounds crazy, but it, it's true. The basics that you do in gym launch and you learn here are what apply to any other business. And so if for any reason you're like, I'm struggling here, I would just encourage you like figure it out now because these problems exist in every business and they just come in a different costume almost. The people who give up only give up to then start a different business or a different vehicle to then <laughs> confront the same problems at a different point in time. Make the best of what you have here, the opportunity you have to make yourself better, given the tools you have. These skill sets you could do so many things with. And if you can hone it on now and make your gym excellent, then I think that you set your future self up for success. Layla, I just want to say thank you so much for coming on. You are so busy right now. This is probably the busiest time of the quarter for you. So you to take the time to come here and talk to everyone, I really appreciate it. I appreciate you guys. And I will always have gym owners in my heart. I love you guys. I'm excited to see you guys at the event. Appreciate y'all. Go crush, go change more lives.